everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and today I am going to show you how to take um, your Logic Pro 10 or Logic Pro X session and prepare the session to send to another engineer for them to work on your session or if you're a client of mine working with Vision Recording Studios to send it to me so I can work on your project. So we're going to prepare the, the session and we're going to send it off via Dropbox. We're going to do two things. We're going to show, I'm going to show you how to just export the audio files as WAV files, which is a much simpler process if you were just going to send someone the WAV files. And then I'm also going to show you um, how to prepare the session if you wanted to send the entire Logic Pro session. So here we are on Logic Pro 10. Um, and the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to, um, we're going to export the stems. So if we want to export just the stems as WAV files, it's pretty simple. Um, you're just going to come up to File. And we're going to go down to export and we're going to go to all tracks as audio files. Now what this is going to do is it's not only going to bounce out all the tracks as a WAV file, which I'll show you in a second, but it's also going to take any MIDI data that you have, any VSTs that are in your program. What's nice about Logic Pro 10 is let's say like I have the last track here is a is a virtual software instrument by Easy by TuneTrack called Easy Keys. It's a um, virtual instrument piano and it's MIDI data. And what it's going to do is it's going to play out that data and it's going to create an audio track. There's no reason to convert it uh, if you at first uh, like you would in many other DAW. So it's kind of nice and kind of convenient. So you go to export all audio tracks as all tracks as audio files. Click on that. We're going to get a dialog box and we're going to, it's going to ask you, where do you want to save it? I recommend you put it on your desktop. It's going to say, what do you want to save it as? And the naming scheme I'd like you to use, if you're a client of mine, I'd like you to use the artist name, underscore the song title, underscore the tempo or the beats per minute, if you could. And then you can put the word or underscore and then put the word stems or audio files after that. So it'll look something like this. So we have the artist name, the song tile, the BPMs, and the word stems. So we know that that's, uh, that's what's in the folder. Now we're going to come down here to format. We're going to save it as a WAV file. And the bit depth we're going to use, the highest resolution that we used when we recorded uh, in our Logic Pro uh, session. Um, and typically it would probably be 24-bit. Um, so let's keep it at 24-bit. Uh, down here we want to look at um, these boxes down here where we have bypass effects plugins. So if you're sending someone raw audio WAV files, and if you're a client of mine doing this, I want you to check this box. What this is going to do, it's going to allow you to, it's going to allow Logic Pro to not process any of the inserts or plugins that you may have in your session if you were doing some rough mixing, so on and so forth. It's going to bypass all of those, so I'm just getting the raw audio file. Um, include the volume panning automation. We want to keep this unchecked. Again, if you did any kind of automation or anything like that, I don't want that. I just want the, again, the track as raw as possible. So keep that box unchecked. Um, and then for normalize, just keep it on overload protection only. There's a couple of choices there. Just leave that alone. And then leave add resulting files to audio bin. Um, just keep that unchecked because if you check this, what it'll do is it'll actually bring those bounced WAV files back into our session. We don't want to do that. So go ahead and just hit save. And what it's going to do, it's going to scan the song here and it's going to export all of those uh, tracks and MIDI instruments um, as audio files. And then we'll minimize this and I'll show you on the desktop where it is. Okay, so now it's done. So let's just minimize this for a second so you can see it. And you can see that it's out here on the desktop. And we should probably have created a folder on the desktop. But here's all our WAV files. You can see they're all right here. There's only six or seven of them here. So here's our WAV files. We should have put this into a folder, honestly. So what we could do now is you can just go ahead on your desktop, right click, you can just go create a folder. And then you can call that folder uh, whatever you want to call it. Again, I would use the artist name, the song title, the BPMs, and the word st um, stems or audio files. And we can just highlight these and drop it in here like so. And then here's our audio files. Okay. 
And as you can see, um, our keyboard, which was a virtual instrument, is now a WAV file, Easy Keys WAV. So it took that MIDI data and it made it a WAV file. So now what you can do from here to send it to me via Dropbox, all I would ask you to do is go ahead and, and if you're on a PC, um, it's called zipping. If you're on a Mac, you're going to compress this folder. Um, it's the same as zip. You're going to right click on the folder. Let's first, let's change the, uh, let's change the name here. Let's change the, the naming scheme. So again, artist name, song title, BPM. Artist name, song title, BPM stems. Okay. Now we're going to right click on that folder and we are going to go to compress. Again, if you're using a windows, it would be zip. And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead, it's going to compress it down. It's going to zip up the, uh, the audio files into one file, which we'll see in a second. Okay. And then here is your zip folder. Now this is the folder we're going to send via Dropbox. So if you don't know what Dropbox is, just go to your favorite uh, web browser and you can either just search it. It's uh, dropbox.com. So let's go over to dropbox.com. And what I'll do is if it's, I think it'll have me signed in, I will log out. So you see the uh, home screen. So when you go to dropbox.com, here's the screen you're going to go to. If you don't know what Dropbox is, Dropbox is a website that allows you to share and transfer files from over the internet via the cloud. Um, what's great about uh, these types of services, Dropbox, Gobbler, Google Drive, they're all, they all do the same thing. They will all give you a free account and they'll all give you anywhere from a couple of gigabytes to up to five gigabytes of free space without having to pay for an account, which is more than enough. Um, anything over a gigabyte is more than enough to send um, a pretty good size recording session. So you should just be able to create a free account. Um, but what the reason why you would use a website such as Dropbox is because audio files and recording session files and sessions are far too large to email. So you need to use some kind of a, a file transfer service and that's what Dropbox is. So what you're gonna do is create yourself an account if you don't already have one. If you have yourself an account, you're gonna log in, which I'll do right now. Okay, when you log in, if you're new to Dropbox, um, you may look at, be looking at a blank screen. You'll see all the different folders that I have, files that I have here, because I transfer files with clients virtually every day. So you may just have a blank screen, which is completely fine. Once you're in this screen, we want to go up to these top icons. We want to create a new folder. And we're going to call this, say, um, again, Logic Pro Session. or whatever you feel is appropriate. It will put it in alphabetical order in your list. We're gonna open that folder and now we're gonna import or upload our zip file that we created on our desktop. So we're gonna go up to the icons, upload, choose files. And we're gonna look for our zip file. Here it is right here. We're gonna open it. And depending on your internet speed, depending on the speed of your computer, depending on how large this file really is and how big your session was, this can take anywhere from 30 seconds to, it could take several hours, depending on the, your situation. So you're gonna upload this. Once it's finished uploading, I'm gonna show you how to just email it over to me or to someone else. Um, so I will pause the video and come back in a few minutes when this is finished uploading and we will continue this video. Okay, now that it's finished uploading here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click done. And then from here, we're just gonna go to the share button. Um, and we're going to share it and you're going to be able to enter the email address. If you're a client of mine, you know, my email address or whoever you're going to be sending it to. And you can send the message as well. Then you're going to click send. And then what's going to happen is whoever you send it to is going to get an email saying that there's a link uh, from Dropbox with some files for you to download and we'll be able to download it to our computer. So that's how you send it via Dropbox. And if you are, um, sending the entire logic session, which I'm going to show you how to do right now in a second. Um, it's email, it's sent to Dropbox the exact same way. So let me pause the video. We'll come right back and I'll show you how to prepare the session itself. If you want to send the whole recording session. Okay, here we are back in our original logic session. If now I'm going to show you how to go ahead and prepare the session. If you were going to send me, if you're one of my clients, the actual logic session for me to work from as opposed to just the wave files or if you're gonna send this off to somebody else. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to make a copy, a duplicate of this session. So we don't um, screw around and we can retain the, um, the things that you have in your session and we don't mess around with that. So the first thing we're gonna do is go up to file. We're gonna go save copy as, and we're gonna make a copy of this. We're gonna put it out on the desktop, okay? 
And again, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this again, the artist name, the song title and the BPMs. Okay. Or something to that effect. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then export as again, we're going to call it the same thing, song name or artist name, song name, BPMs. Okay, just keeps everything nice and organized and easy. Hit save. Okay, so what it's going to do, it's going to save it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to close this original session. Here's the original session still. We're going to close this. First, let's just save it. Let's close it. And now we're going to go out to the folder that we just created, which is right here. And in here, you're going to see the new project that we just made a copy of. With Logic, if you right click on that icon and go to show package contents, you will see all the folders that are behind the scenes, which one of them is the media folder with all the audio files. Okay, so the Logic session is there and it's complete. Now I want you to open up that Logic session, the duplicate now, not the original. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to open up the mixer. And we're going to set all our levels to 0 dB and we're going to set all our panning to, uh, to 0 or in the center, I should say. Okay, we're going to do that. Get everything to Unity. Hopefully you've recorded things in a way that are not too hot, where things are all clipping. If things are clipping, when you play back your session, if everything's at zero dB and everything is clipping really bad, just highlight all the tracks. Highlight the first one, hold down Shift. Uh, highlight the last one um, here, and then just pull everything down a little bit so it's not blasted as soon as we open up the session. But if you recorded properly at like a negative 10, negative 12 dB, then you should have no problem. You could put everything in Unity, but just be aware of that. Okay, make sure all your pans are um, at the center. Okay, once you do that, just close the mixer and just uh, do me a favor if you're a client of mine, make sure that all your tracks are kind of named appropriately. There's nothing worse than getting a session that has 90 tracks in it and they're all labeled audio one, audio two, audio three. So obviously these are, this is one of my sessions, but things are just labeled appropriately, kick, snare, overheads, bass, guitar, so on and so forth. The other thing you want to do is you want to join or consolidate your, your tracks. In Logic, we call it joining. Um, and so let's take a look at this bass track. So let's say you had a, a performance where you comped a performance together and you have a bunch of um, separate audio blocks here. We want to make this one big audio block. And the reason for that is sometimes when you send off recording sessions and someone else opens them up in their computer, things don't always line up. Things can shift um, at a time and it just makes it easier that if you have a, a vocal or a performance on an instrument that's completely chopped up like this bass track is we want to make it one solid block of audio like it is on all the other tracks so the way to do that is just highlight all the blocks and you can go up to your toolbar you can click join um, or you can just right click on the events and there's a there's a, a join I believe is it in the right click I think it is yes it is it's the top one or it's command J and what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and it's going to make it one block of audio, which is really good. Uh, same thing with your, um, with your MIDI, which we'll get to in a second. So now what we're going to do, again, if you're going to send the, the whole recording session now, not just the WAV files, any MIDI data that you have, unless we've discussed something um, during our pre-production meeting together and we decided that you were going to leave a specific MIDI instrument on the session, if, if we did not discuss that, and more times than not, we're not going to discuss that. I'm going to ask you to convert all your MIDI to audio and um, remove the instrument tracks. And the reason for that is, is because if I don't have the same MIDI instrument or VST that you have when you created your, your, your song, I'm not going to be able to get the same sounds as you. So the best way to do it is just to go ahead and just convert it to audio. Now, one way you can do it is you can, you know, again, when you're doing just uh, WAV files, you don't have to do anything. It will automatically do that on the export. But if you're going to leave it in the session like we are here, the best thing to do is just to highlight your three MIDI uh, blocks here in this particular case, or we can go ahead and join it just by right clicking first, join it, make it one big block. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, transform this over to audio. Okay, so we're gonna right click highlight there, this block of MIDI data now, we're gonna right click on it and we are going to bounce in place. So where is our bouncing, bouncing, bouncing? Bounce in place, bounce and join, bounce in place. We're gonna get a dialog box, it's gonna say what do you wanna name it? Uh, we can call it keys if that's what this is. 
Um, we could put it on a new track or we can keep it on the selected track. I just put it on the new track for now. Uh, the source, uh, you're going to delete the source, meaning that once we do this, um, it's going to remove the MIDI data here. Um, but because this is a duplicate of your session, remember, this is not the original. We're going to include the audio tail in the file in case there was any reverb or make sure no audio gets cut off. Um, include the vanning, uh, include the volume and pan automation. Again, we're going to uncheck that and then we're going to leave this on normalize overload protection only. And then we're going to hit OK. And what that's going to do, it's going to scan the MIDI data and it's going to make an audio track is what it's going to do. It's going to convert it over to audio for us. And there it is right here. And then what you can do is you can highlight the original instrument track and you can just remove or delete the track. And now we have just the audio track of that. So now I don't have to worry about not having the same virtual instrument as you. We just, we're now it's, now it's audio. So we're, so we're totally, totally fine there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to save this project. Now everything is prepared. Um, oh, the last thing I want you to do too, open up your mixer. And if you have any plugins, again, unless we discuss something prior and we, we made a decision to keep certain plugins on, I don't have any here, but if you have any plugins at all, any inserts, compressors, EQs, reverbs, delays, take everything off. We don't want anything, um, on the session. I want the audio, the session with completely raw and dry tracks is, is possible. Okay. So make sure you remove all the plugins, all the sends, all of it. Just in, and again, unless we discuss something, do not keep any plugins on your session. Okay. So now that we're done with that, we can go ahead, we can save. And now remember we saved it out to our desktop so we can go ahead and we can close the session. And then again, if you go out and look at this uh, folder, here it is, here's our logic session. Now what we're going to do is this is the session that we're going to send via Dropbox. So again, you can right click on that folder and you can compress it. Or if you're on a windows machine, they call it zipping. And again, it's going to zip it to a zip file. And just like we did with the stems, we're going to send the zip folder. That's what we're going to send via Dropbox or Gobbler or one of those other file sharing, uh, websites. So I hope that was helpful. This is how uh, you send the logic pro session, the stems and the recording session file to me. If you're a client of mine, thanks for watching any more. Uh, if you'd like any more coaching tips, concepts training on home recording go over to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and for more information about me and my website and my mixing and mastering services head over to visionrecordingstudios.com this has been david and i will talk to you all soon take care